hello viewers welcome to the matlab basic series today we are going to see how to read and write numerical data into text file with matlab so the matlab functions that we will be needing for this is f open f printf f close f scanf and write matrix so f open is used for creating or opening a text file f printf for writing to a text file f close for closing the text file and f scanf for reading from the text file we are also going to see one more function called as write matrix which is pretty convenient matrix for writing into a text file a data into a text file so let's get started so we need some data so i'm going to uh, generate uh, random data um, based on um, some dimension so here i'm using rand i which is which will generate random integers uh, in the range between 1 to 5 so i'll generate numbers from 1 to 5 order and in the dimension given by the row and column here i'm giving row to be 5 and column to be 1 and then when i run this program you can see here that i have five rows so if i count these are five rows the vertical is the column the horizontal is my row so i have five horizontals and one vertical so there is like five rows and one column so that is my input data the next is i am going to write this input data into a text file so i have to store this data into a text file so in order for me to do that i need to open a text file or i need to create a text file in my windows directory so if you have a text file it will open that text file for writing if it is not there it will just create one in your windows folder or in the folder where this program is kept so that is your current working directory so in that current folder you will generate a text file and have to write this data into the text file so how are we going to write the text file data so the writing the text file data is something we use the statements So here, what uh, f printf is pre pretty much is what you need for writing the data into the text file. But you must also see that there are a few other arguments which goes inside the f printf. The first of which is the percentage d. So what percentage d means uh, in MATLAB is it tells the file write command the f printf that the data that is coming in, that data that you are going to write is an integer. It's not, um, you know, it's an integer data. Then if I give it as percentage f. it tells that it's a floating point so it's a data which is having decimal date with the decimal points it's having some kind of um a data which is you know you having both the um component the numbers after and before the decimal so that is for after and before the decimal so that is for percentage f then i will i will also add one more because we are not seeing that here which is percentage s so this is for string data so if your data is numeric uh, then it is either integer or a float or it can also be alphabet alphabetical like it can be a string it can be a name it can be a date it can be some kind of data which is in the form of your alphabetical form so that comes as a string data so we'll see how we are doing the integer and float in this series um maybe i'll just uh, leave the string for you i'll just give some commands that will help you in also write, reading and writing the string data f print f um yes so i am giving this so the num vector is our data so that is the data that we want to write the file you know in which we want to write that is given by the text file create okay so we do that then we get this then we want to to if you can see these both are identical the only difference is slash n so this will tell um the f print f to after each value so after you put, you print a decimal value into a text file then you go to the next line you print a decimal value into the text file then you go to the next line so it prints each value in different lines or different after you after going uh, printing a value then it goes to the next line so it does not print in series here it won't be um, let us see how how the output looks like so i'm going to run here and see show you the output okay so we may need to type the store So we want to see this output. So let's type uh, store num array text. So this is store num vector text. So this is what we are using. Now let us see the output. So you can see the output here. So if you see the output, the first print statement, the first print statement output is in this form. Okay. So let me just uh, go for a few more. And then it's printing. After that, it's printing everything in the separate line. Okay. So this is. how you get so if i just comment this so let us just comment this and then see how the output is now you can see it is printing in the same way so this is a 1 cross 5 this is a 1 cross 5 
it's printing each value then it is going to the next line printing the value going to the next line printing so now let me just disable this line and enable this line then let, let's see how it now you get a horizontal because you're not telling matlab much you're just telling that i'm sending you a bunch of integers just put it on the text file so matlab just has a default setting so it, it just understands that it has to store the values but it doesn't know how to store the values and in what format it has to in uh, we just know the format in what order it has to store the value it doesn't know so it just puts the value in sequence so these are some of the things that you can um, work around for storing your number text next uh, we are going to use another function so i was talking about uh, this function uh, right uh, matrix so let me you can use this function right matrix function let me just keep this one store number vector one dot text So this is for the right matrix. This is a function in MATLAB that pretty much does the same. Let's just run it and see what you get as an output. See, you get the same thing. So in right matrix also, it is giving it is doing this, okay? And you don't have to specify, you don't have to initialize with F open. So here we have F open, F printf, F close. These three are compulsory statement. Because if you don't use this F close, then your file can could get altered and uh, it could not even say properly. You may not be able to open it where you intend to open the text file so this is a three statement so it's like you, ha you have to have f open f print of f close uh, but whereas uh, for right matrix we just have to give this i feel this is very convenient if i don't have to do much formatting with my data so when i mean by formatting the ordering of the data so if i have to put data in this in this format in that format because in right matrix i only get to use delimiter so we're going to see a little bit more on these functions itself but for an array because this is a vector so this is a vector means it's just we're talking about a one row of data or one column of data so you just have a bunch of now of data or one column of data so you just have a bunch of numbers and then you just have to uh, store it in a text file now we are going to see how you do the matrix or how do you do an array so that is having a two-dimensional data so it's having multiple rows and multiple columns so if that is the case then what we are going to do so we'll just create a random data first just the just how we did so pretty now uh, most of the things are repeat repetitive so it will not be uh, hard to follow for you yes but it's just going to have little more features than what we have seen in the very basic uh, file read and write uh, file probably file write we will see the read this is the range now instead of uh, a single row or a single column i have multiple rows and multiple column I'm, I'm going to generate a five cross five matrix so if i just run this okay this is my five cross five matrix to note here is before it was uh, integer now i have just multiplied that with a random fractional um, value random fractional value so that i get all my values to be in decimal so this way i'm getting a numeric array so that is my input so then num array is my input five cross five sir and then how I'm going to write this into a text file. So that is the next thing we want to see. I'm going to now create the file. So I'm going to create an array file and then I'm going to do the fprintf and f close. Right, so we have to do this. So I'm going to, for writing this, this is going to be my text. I don't want to do much with this. And uh, here, let me just put in the coding format. Okay. So this also let it be in the text format. So now uh, for writing array to a text file, what, what else is needed apart from these things? So we have seen what is percentage D and we have seen what is percentage F. Uh, so that is an integer and a floating. Uh, now you see some numerics in front of those. So when I uh, say it's like uh, 3.5 F or 3 D, so what it means is it has like pretty much in MATLAB, it just means that I have two decimal places. So when I say 2.2 F, then it says like your, your number is going to have two decimal places. So even if my uh, input is having three decimal places, the MATLAB will only store the two decimal places. Here, if you see for our input, we have four decimal places. Um, but in my uh, text file, I'm going to use only two decimal places. 
and let us see how the output is getting stored in the text. So it is the same thing. We are going to create a we are going to create a text file, and then um, the text file is store num array before it was store num vector, and then uh, this uh, fprintf is used. Here the difference is since it's a two dimensional, I have five rows and five columns. I want to print five values first. So I want to print my five values first, then go to the next line. So that what will happen is I get in this format. So I print the five line first, then I go to the next line, then I so that way I, I print all my rows and I will see a matrix in my text file. If I don't do that, then it's going to print all the values in sequence. So that is something we have printed here. So I've kept only one percentage F followed by slash n. So this is going to just what it print a value, go to the next line, print a value, go to the next line. So I'm just going to print all the five cross five value in one column. So it's come out as a 25 values in one column. So we'll see that also. So let us see the difference between just using percentage, using percentage F here and uh, using point to F. Okay, so how the output is going to be. So I put this type, yeah, let us see how the output is stored. So now here it will store all three because I'm executing three print statements together. So first it will print this on the text file because the text file is still open. It will print this next, then it will print this next. So that's why you are seeing these many outputs. So if you see here, the first five cross five is having the exact same data as our input. So there's no rounding happening, there's no position, it's just pressing the float. So that's pretty convenient if you want to keep all the uh, decimal values. Then the second array is using only two decimal values. So you can see here that it is rounding, it's truncating. Rather than rounding, we can say it's truncating. <coughs> no, it is rounding because 285 and here you have 29. So it is uh, kind of rounding. So this is your five cross filing. And then here I'm printing one value, then the next, next in each value. So I get a series of I know, one column, 25 value. So this is in the store number. So your text files will be stored in your uh, computer. So if I go to this um, folder, I'll be able to see all these text files. Okay, the text file where the code is written, you can see all the text files. I'm just displaying the text file outputs. What is the content of the text file? that is for the storing the data and you can even use the right matrix for this purpose also. So I'm just going to show how you will use the right matrix, um, the right matrix to write our stuff into a num array. So I have the delimiter, the delimiter, the first one is a tab. I can even write a semi colon as a delimiter. So it's going to store this matrix into this array, but it's going to keep a tab as a bit gap and it, here it's going to use a semicolon to put between values. So let us just type this and see how you're getting the output. You can see here it is using semicolon. But the one thing you have to notice in the right matrix is since there is no F open and F close, uh, it does not overwrite. So if I just use this, then I'll get a matrix with the tab. So you can see here, this is the matrix with the tab. Okay, so this is the output. And uh, if you put this semicolon it overwrites on the matrix so if i put this then you see only a one matrix with a semicolon so that is one thing you have to be um uh, no there is one difference between there so if you want to use multiple f printf then i think um, if you want to write into a text file multiple times then probably uh, this can be not an option because this right matrix can be called only once so we have not an option because this right matrix can be called only once so we have to consolidate all the data into an array and then just call it once and just uh, put the values in the text file whereas there uh, at each computation if you want to write iteratively if you want to write at different places so this is the much more flexible option for doing it uh, another thing is you can just give a semicolon in this format and it would still work for your right matrix so that is one thing. And now um, if I go to my folder, I'll be able to see all these files so that I've told you. Uh, the next thing is for string. So we have seen all the numeric data. So this code I will be uploading in the GitHub and I'll share the link. That is, um, I'll write. but the only thing you have to do is uh, for the string, you may have to use percentage F and pretty much the other things are the same. Now we look in, now we can see how we will read this text file and into the MATLAB what space. So let's open the same text file that we have. That we have same and just put this. Okay, then. So I'm reading. So here the mode R represents its read mode. It means that it's a va uh, value added text file. So there is a uh, value present in the text file. I'm just calling it into this variable read text file. 
next the read data type and few other things we need i'm just going to put that also here so this is for reading your text file what you need so you need the text file okay. then you need the data type so here i'm specifying it as a float data type because i know that in my numeric array i'm going to call it in this format so i'm going to take three values three float values at a time then then i'm going to take uh, you define the size of the read data and that size can be just three comma infinity okay the three comma infinity then fscaf is going to have the text file read read data type and size of read data so these three have passed as an input to our scan data so it will open this file for reading then it will read the data type in this format so it knows that my read data type is going to be three float values at a time and the other size can be infinity because we don't know what the exact size what is the exact number of data if there is an exact number that you know you can just define that here but if you're not sure of what the exact data is just call it in this format and then you can later um, reshape the uh, array in your uh, workspace in matlab after calling it into matlab so display uh, the size of the read data so let's see now uh, what is your read data i'm, I'm not putting a semicolon here so the output will get displayed output will get displayed here itself so this is my three red data you can see that it is reading three values at a time three values at a time so three comma infinity so the infinity is 25 so my data is now at three cross 25 you can resize it into any dimension you want you can resize it into five cross five which was our input data and right? we stored it uh, we stored a five cross five data into a text file and then we read it back but we read it in a different order because we, don't, we were not sure how many data are there because most of the time when you get an input uh, you don't know what are the what is the size of the data what is the number of rows the number of columns of the data in the text file so the best thing to do is just define something like this just like three float at a time so it will read three float at a time and then keep the other parameter to infinity then after you read it into so now your read data is a matlab variable so your read data is a three cross 25 matlab variable which you can reshape it you can do uh, any kind of um, altering in the size of that data all right guys so that is it for this lecture math matlab basics i hope you all followed this lecture i'll be uploading the get um the code in the github the link in the description please follow the thank you guys i'll see you in the next lecture